Hello everyone. Happy Saturday. Welcome to another of our Saturday Anything Goes series. Today I was looking for a gift box to uh, give someone a bracelet in and of course you can never find what you want. So after um, going on YouTube and just looking around, I found the perfect size box for a bracelet. It measures three and a quarter inches square. Um, so it will really fit almost any size bracelet you have. And it's fairly deep as well. I made one ahead of time and this is using retired paper. I do like to use up my retired paper, especially when it's as pretty as this. Now, the box is really neat um, for a couple reasons. It has this ribbon, which you slide off. And then, keeping the flap closed is your sentiment panel. And if I turn it sideways, what you'll see is I have propped up the bottom with dimensionals, but have left the top loose. And that way, if I pull both ends apart it's like a little self-closing box so it really doesn't even need the ribbon to keep it closed and then you open it up and i've got a bracelet in here with a little tissue paper and as you can see it's really pretty deep and it will hold a full-size bracelet so it's just perfect to stuff with tissue and you could even put um, if you've got those stretchy bracelets which I love to wear in groups of three or four all of them will fit in here very nicely you can put earrings you can put a necklace heck you could just about put all three of them in there if you put them in little plastic pouches and I love the fact that not only do we get to see the pretty outside of our paper but when you open up the box it's already decorated inside as well. So let's talk about how you make it. I'll pull this one over to the side and I'm going to bring in our share what you love paper and a small pattern like this is perfect for the size box and I think I mentioned it but it's a three and a quarter inch square box and it's probably I want to say about two inches deep. Um, so I chose a small pattern and I made sure if you have a directional pattern, um, this piece of paper measures eight and a quarter by 10 and a quarter. So you want to make sure that your direction is going up or down based on that eight and a quarter inch side. Let's get out the scoreboard because we do need to score this. And I'm oops, sorry about that. Zoom this out. So hopefully you'll be able to see um, the top of the scoreboard here and follow along with the measurements. With our 10 and a quarter inch at the top, we're going to score at two inches at three and a half inches, at six and three quarters inches, and at eight and a quarter inches. And I really love this because everything's in quarter inches. You're not having to deal with three eighths or five eighths. I sometimes can find that a little challenging. Now that we have the scoring on the long side done, we're gonna rotate it. And we're going to score along the, uh, with the short side at the top, we're going to score at one inch, at two and a half inches, at five and three quarters inches. And our last score line will be at seven and a quarter inches. And that is all the scoring we're going to do. So I'll put this away. Now to make our flaps, we do have some cutting that we need to do. Um, and if you haven't seen the back side of this paper, it's that beautiful stripe, which I thought would be perfect inside. 
I've got my score lines here, and to make our flaps, we need to cut away the outer three squares in each of the corners. And then we'll cut up that inside square there to make our flap. So let's see if I can see my score lines. I'm going to go ahead and cut all the way up to the second score line on both pieces here. And I try to cut just inside the score line to get rid of any bulk. All right, so that's what we've done so far. And then we're going to trim away this piece here. Ah, if I can pick it up. And there's my score line. So I'll cut that apart. So this goes away completely. And then we're going to cut away this piece here. We don't need that at all. And this is the flap that we're left with. And I'm going to go ahead and miter this in to make it less bulky for when we uh, glue our box together. So we'll repeat that on all four sides. So cutting up, and I just found it easier to cut straight up of both of those score lines. You can take these panels off any way you like if you find there's an easier way and this pattern makes it a little bit difficult to see the score lines in places so don't be afraid to kind of bend things up or down if you need to and this probably took me more time than anything because as you saw scoring took only a couple of minutes by cutting away these, I just want to make sure that I'm getting rid of any bulk. So that's one side done. I'm going to take it over to this side and repeat the process. All right, so there's one, two, and this one I'm just going to cut all the way across there. So as you can see, it doesn't matter how you cut it as long as you're getting those pieces off. Come on, there we go. Okay, we're almost done. We've just got, oops, one more side to do. That's this side. And miter that corner. All right, so that's all of our cutting done. Oops, I forgot to miter this corner. Mitering really does help your box close much neater when you're gluing those flaps down. So I'll take all these scraps, put them in the scrap pile because sometimes those little scraps can come in handy. So this is what we're left with. So we've got our flaps here and here. Before I start folding and burnishing, I want to round my corners. It really gives the box a nice polished look. And for that, I'm using our new punch. Very easy, this corner part here, as you can see, is um, a corner rounder. And then up here is a little oval cut out which is handy for stringing ribbon through um, a card and then this is a nice floral cut out uh, that's useful for decorating edges so i'm just going to go ahead and line things up and this paper is pretty thick so i'm putting quite a bit of weight on it so i'll do that corner And then this corner. And then I also, believe it or not, want to do the corners here and here. 
it just helps give it a nice polished look. For this, I'm going to turn my flaps down because it tends to fit all the way into the punch better. So making sure I'm lined up. There's one corner. I tried to do it earlier by uh, just leaving those flaps out and I found that it didn't round my corners as nicely as I would have liked. And that was just because I couldn't really make sure it was sitting flush up against the guides. Come on, no corner. There we go. All right, flaps don't get in the way. There we go. And there's one. And we've got one more left to do. And just make sure you're pushing it as far up in there as you can, lining it up with the guides on either side. Okay, and there we have our nice rounded corners. Okay, time to start putting it together. Now we need to put uh, glue or tape onto our flaps. And I'm going to go ahead and use my tear and tape for this. I just found that it worked really well. So I just used a couple of strips. Sometimes my tear and tape doesn't really want to tear, but I'll get there. And you know what? I'm going to use my stamp block. That makes it a lot easier. So two strips on each side of the flap should do the trick. And then we'll be able to stick our box together. All right. That's two of the flaps done. Tell you what, using a block to tear the tape, not only easier, but it gives you nice clean edges as well. Can't remember who showed me that trick. But I'll bet you guys already knew about that one. Hi, Amy. Thanks for joining. Hope you're not getting the bad thunderstorms out where you are like we have been out here. Okie dokie. Now I'm just going to give these a burnish down. Make sure that they stick to the paper and don't come up when I peel off the backing. And I just go ahead and do all, take the backing off all four, four pieces at the same time. Come on, there we go. Oh, see, that one wanted to come up, so I probably didn't burnish that down quite enough. Okay, two more left to do here. Still haven't gotten one of those nice little trash bins from my desk, but it's on my next order. I don't know about you guys, but I am trying so hard to wait for July. And part of me was hoping that the blends would come out mid-June, but part of me is pretty glad they didn't <laughs> because now when I get them, they can uh, all go towards my next quarter. Okay, so we've got our tape there. And you know what I didn't do that I probably should have done before I put the tape on there, but we'll make it work is fold and burnish. Want to make sure we have nice crisp lines. Very important for a box. Okay, just a couple more here. 
be careful not to get my tape stuck down on anything. But we'll make it work. Oops. There we go. Okay. So, all my folding and burnishing is done, and our box is going to come together very quickly, very easily. I'm just going to make sure that I am lining up my edges and getting them as straight as I can, as flush as I can. And this is where cutting the bulk out of those score lines really comes in handy. Sometimes if you leave that little bit of bulk, it can cause your box to be just a little bit out of square. But I think we did pretty good with this one. All right, and now I'm going to go in and just make sure I've got good contact between the flaps and the box. As you can see, that one needs a little more encouragement. So really make sure you go in and squish it down. And then our box is going to come together like that. Now I've got a little bit of fullness over here. So evidently I did not get the excess bulk out. But no worries. Just bring your scissors in if that ever happens to you. Fold your flaps down and take any of that away very carefully so we don't cut into the main part of our box there we go and now you can see that really helps it to close down nice and neat and we've got our pattern going the right way yay <laughs> I was I had to sit down and make a template uh, before I attempted this to make sure I knew the direction that um, the paper would go so that I could have use a directional DSP. All right, so that was pretty easy. Now what we're going to do is let me see which I like as a top. I think I like that as the top. It's a bit prettier. So what I want to do is I went ahead and I stamped out a sentiment. Um, what's this from? This is from, I want to say, is it detailed with love? I'll have to look that up and I'll put it in the description, but I love Life is Sweeter with Friends Like You. So I cut that out of Whisper White and I went ahead and stamped it in Rich Razzleberry. And for once, my Rich Razzleberry didn't smear on me, so it's a good day. And then I um, cut a scalloped circle out using the Rich Razzleberry to back it with and it just barely peeks out, which is exactly what I wanted. And we're going to attach it right here. Just like with the other one, I'm going to pop only the bottom part up on dimensionals and that will help keep that flap closed. So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and with a little multi-purpose liquid glue, I'm going to glue this to the scallop circle. making sure that I've got just a bit peeking out everywhere. So that looks good. And now I'll grab my dimensionals. And like I said, we're only gonna use our dimensionals along the bottom. So no higher than midway, which is right there. And I think three will do it. Okay, so it's going to be just like that. Let's go ahead and peel our backings off. 
get out my reverse tweezers so I can make sure I get it on there straight. Pull this down to where you can see it. And again, making sure that my uh, dimensionals are below where that flap is so that it will open. And yep, there we go. So easy open, easy close, just like that. Now let's put our ribbon on, and other than a couple little embellishments, we'll be done. And I decided to use this shimmer ribbon. I think it goes beautifully with the uh, DSP. I have enough of the rich razzleberry. I wanted to pick up a little bit of the greenish blue tones. So let me get myself enough to tie a really good bow. Because y'all know me, I can make a fake bow just fine, but tying the real ones while it's on something can be a little challenging. All right, here we go. Fingers crossed. At least I gave myself enough ribbon this time. Last time I cut it way too short, if you saw on Tuesday night, to make an actual bow. All right, let's see how our bow came out. Uh, it's not half bad. Could use a little tightening up there. It's a little cattywampus, but it will straighten out. All right, take my tails down a notch. Cut that one just a tiny bit shorter. And now that also will help to keep the box closed, although that flap does a pretty good job. Now let's go ahead and embellish it. Pull out my pretty little embellishment tray here and I think for this one I'm going to use my share what you love artisan pearls a little box like this doesn't need great big embellishments I want to keep it looking dainty and delicate so I'll pull these out my goodness they're double wrapped which is I guess a good thing now I don't have to worry about them. Here we go. Get out my pokey tool and decide what colors I want. And luckily these colors match perfectly. So I think I'll go ahead and on either side of the sentiment, put a rich razzleberry. Really helps it stand out. And then do I want to intermix it with some of these? That's a pretty color, but I'm thinking I might want to go, oh my goodness, my pearls do not want to stick. Come on. Hi, and thanks for joining this afternoon. All right, note to self, <laughs> be careful pulling these off because they do like to come off. So I think I'm just going to use one of the, um, the bluish green color there just to give it a little extra touch of color and tie in that ribbon. And that's really all there is to it. So here in what, less than 20 minutes, we made our gift box. And as I said, I'm going to slide my ribbon off here, pop it open, and look at how pretty that inside is. Just love, love, love um, that we have designs on both the front and the back of this paper. And now I can take and I can put some tissue paper in there. Take my bracelet or whatever piece of jewelry I happen to have. Fold in my outside flaps, my side flaps, and then bring these two together. 
and just kind of lift up a little bit on the flap and it'll slide down and as you can see it stays closed even without the ribbon but I do think that that ribbon gives it just the perfect little finishing touch. And you certainly could use our, for instance, our rich razzleberry uh, velvet ribbon would have looked really pretty. Um, even some of our baker's twine that has the uh, blue in it probably would work really well. All right, so there's our box. And I'll bring in our other one here just so that you can see them side by side. Perfect little all occasion box. And there you have it. I want to thank you all for joining me today. If you have any questions at all, please leave me a, a comment in the comment box. If you need to shop for any supplies, cardsbywinnie.wordpress.com. There will be a link right there that will take you directly into my store. And I will post these on my blog along with a supply list as well as upload them to YouTube a little bit later today. And that way you can always go back if you have any questions while you're making it. Um, and I'm a visual person. It helps me to actually watch it as I'm uh, making the different projects. Okay, well, thanks, everybody. I hope you have a great rest of the weekend, and uh, I'll see you Tuesday night. Bye-bye now.